Very good morning. I hope everyone is doing well. It is Friday, 20th of September. I'm going to cover a couple of things, as you can see here. A story about the pound from a Juncker comment late yesterday evening, uh, helping elevate the pound this morning. Um, an update on the Saudi-Iran tensions and how that's continuing to provide an underlying kind of area of support for crude prices. And then a quick look at the calendar for the day ahead. So. Hopefully we'll be quite prompt from my side. So there's not a great deal of new information that's come out. And I guess quite typical after you have a, a week where you've had the BOJ, the FOMC, the Bank of England. Uh, we kind of peaked, if you like, in terms of those big events in the middle of the week. And so now things have dropped off a little bit. And generally speaking, I'd say at the moment, um, it's a relatively neutral, perhaps slightly uh, kind of mildly positive feeling to the open. Uh, equity index futures in the US just a touch higher, Europe pretty flat overall, uh, oil a little bit up as well about 50 cents or so, T-notes flat, uh, gold up about five bucks for the moment. Uh, quite a stark difference though from where we started at the beginning of the week of course there was quite a lot of tension in the air coming from the attacks that were seen on Saudi Arabia at the weekend uh, and certainly that's dropped away a little bit although as we're going to discuss in a second uh, there still definitely is um, a lot to monitor within that region uh, and certainly just a, a, a course of action here or there that gets retaliated at in a certain way militarily could certainly spice things up pretty quickly. Uh, but certainly that kind of big uncertainty we had, the big gap in markets on Monday, a lot of that seems to have been removed and I know Sam's going to talk about this more in a moment but you know we were looking at the S&P 500 this morning and you can see it here these areas of which um, we've been looking at over the course of the week really and here we are once again we had a real test of it yesterday failed to break but you know if you look at the uh, the kind of formation of these candlesticks certainly the pullbacks are getting more shallow up to challenge that trend line that arguably pushes us back up again to all-time high the all-time high of course in the futures in the S&P would be just above at 29 and a half and yeah it would not be shocking at all to get up there at some point whether that being today or in coming days on the trade war side as well um, apparently there's comments I was off the desk for a portion of the afternoon yesterday but could low kind of being a bit more positive but then there was an un unidentified source saying well just hold on perhaps not quite so much and this comes with those ground level talks that have been happening in Washington yesterday and will continue today laying the groundwork then for the more formal heads of state to meet in, in uh, October. Uh, so definitely I'd keep an eye out today, although it's not ever really a, a scheduled specific time on a calendar, but just given it's the end of the week now, and though that dialogue has been continuing uh, at that lower level for those discussions on the agricultural purchases in Washington, I'd be mindful of any tweets or comments and things that might come out a bit later on today. Uh, particularly during uh, the US North American hours um, but yeah looking at the pound that was one that is a bit interesting this morning you can see quite a violent move uh, yesterday evening around 6 p.m. and as the overnight Asian session has progressed we've continued to move higher and then in this morning in the UK European Open uh, we remain elevated above a 126 handle so just knocking this over to a a daily continuation chart here to encapsulate the whole this is basically Brexit in a picture as far as the currency pair is concerned you see here on the left the dramatic fall on the night of the surprising vote to leave the EU the no or hard Brexit mention that then forming uh, this really key area of the lowest bound point of about 120 when we're looking at the futures obviously had a test of that only a couple of weeks ago and ever since that point we've come you know, rallying back aggressively and so having got to a brief break at multi-decade lows and a sub 120 print uh, failed to close importantly below that level uh, and ever since that point we're now trading a good six points above that for the moment now one of the things that caused the short-term appreciation here over the last 12 hours or so has come after EU's Juncker um, basically has come out and said he thinks a Brexit deal can be reached by October 31st. So quite a radical shift, you would say, from what had been um, the whole debacle around the Luxembourg PM where Boris was heckled so much he never even took the podium 
um, to where we are, where Juncker making a particularly positive comment. So, yeah, that's the latest state of play. Uh, and I guess going back to the chart for a moment, uh, let's just talk very top level, top level. Because obviously it's not as easy as a deal gets done or a deal is not done. Of course, we know this. We're still going to be awaiting that Supreme Court hearing and the verdict should be early next week on whether Johnson uh, inappropriately used his powers as Prime Minister or not, which obviously will be quite key in the near term. But bigger picture, um, just wanted to put it out there. Where would Cable be if there is a deal before or by October 31st? So obviously up up, upside I think no problem you would get another two point move up to that previous high you can see here this is quite a, uh, from a longer term perspective if I just remove that rectangle here you've got that low the high there the low here the low on the initial night of the referendum so that would be kind of a target for sure go a bit higher though start coming up to I guess the other areas that are really significant is then the previous or the current year-to-date high of 2019, 133.85. So this was before <coughs> Boris came in and the threat of no deal was priced into markets. Um, Sam's, Sam's shouting at me, 135. So 135, obviously, a, a psychological big level. That would put us up then to levels that we haven't really seen going back until May of 2018. So they would be the... The kind of targets from a technical point of view I think we'd get to that 128.29 here no problem um, I would think then if that were broke we'd then be pushing on the upside I'd probably be looking then more towards that 132 would be a target for me because there's probably still a lot of the details to be known and as we know with the Fed last night in a much more uh, tighter time frame devil is obviously in the detail and even though he could get a deal in principle that obviously could be still disrupted so i'd probably see a, a, a strong move but 132 i'd be a little bit more conservative than than sam certainly if it all gets um, rubber stamped and details start coming through well ultimately i think the uk there's enough underlying the uk from an employment wage point of view that if you x'd out brexit and you were to remove then the uncertainty, which would then reignite uh, business investment would come back on, manufacturing activity would pick back up, the service industry would start moving away from stagnation. I see absolutely no problem at all why we don't get back up punching 144 and higher. I mean, the Bank of England are in a different, uh, in a different phase to other central banks globally if it was Xing out Brexit, I would, I would feel. Uh, but... One thing that's particularly interesting is obviously the, the probability of getting a deal over the line by October 31st, I would say, um, I believe is, is lower than what I think is more the base case, which is still that this thing's going to get dragged out, drawn out once again. So actually, if you think about it, let's reverse this conversation. The pound has rallied six points over the course of the last few weeks on the premise of... Um, you know, the idea that perhaps Parliament's managed to get back a little bit control now, perhaps even a deal could get done. But if Boris ignores the law and we go down this route of, well, what if he does and then we have a no deal back on the table? Well, if we did have an, that situation, well, the pound's got a lot of way to come back down again. Uh, we've got a six point clear margin where we could come back and retest those levels. And as we said before, a break of that more more forcefully at 120 opens the trap door to much lower down 115 so yeah medium term long term very interesting of course but there's obviously a whole load of hurdles to to cross and navigate before we get to that point <coughs> okay moving on um just the, the final thing i want to talk about literally is oil and this comes after we've seen this uh, oil is headed for the biggest week in eight months, obviously, just given this surprising development we saw at the weekend with the substantial impact and the implication for production from the, one of the world's biggest oil producers in Saudi Arabia. Remember at the beginning of the week, it was said to have knocked off about 5.7 million barrels per day of, of production, which is akin to more just over half of the entire country's production. Uh, reports have kind of fluctuated, but <coughs> the time frame seems to be 
uh, a little bit to, of, of relief to put some minds at ease that they can bring some back online, at least to the tune of around 2 million. They also have about a month's worth or so of spare kind of infantry uh, to, to see out uh, and facilitate client orders in the, in the interim period. But that doesn't mean that this event has kind of uh, completely gone away. Iran has said overnight that US-Saudi strike would lead to all-out war. Now, what this has meant has last night, Saudi-led coalition last night launched a military operation north of Yemen's uh, port city of uh, Haidida against what is described as a legitimate military target by the Saudis. And obviously, this is an incident that can aggravate these regional tensions, having seen the attacks on the Saudi installations at the weekend. So basically, Saudi Arabian-led coalition has done an airstrike on Yemen, which we know is the hotbed of activity for the proxy war with Iran south of the country of Saudi Arabia. So this definitely hasn't gone away, and it definitely is a key... Uh, risk event and you need to be absolutely aware of the headlines as they're coming out for sure so having a look we ha you know I did mention the other day when I was looking at the price of oil that I felt like we weren't going to close that gap we weren't going to get the gap fill after that aggressive move on the reopening of electronic trade on Sunday night because of these exact reasons yes there's a degree of relief I would say from Saudi Arabia that perhaps um, the uh, speed of which they can turn this around was a little bit quicker than some may have thought at the beginning but ultimately I would say that um, there is undeniably new tensions now with Iran and, and for sure this could flare up again quite quickly so this will be something to watch as well as we go into the weekend I'm sure there'll be more activity of sorts um, being conducted over Saturday and Sunday so and it'll be another interesting open of course when we get to the uh, when we get round to next week Okay, that is pretty much it from me. So quick look at the calendar, and then I'll hand you over to, to Sam. The actual schedule for today is particularly quiet, in fact. So just having a look here, there really isn't a great deal coming out of the UK or Europe. There's the uh, public sector net borrowing coming out of the UK. That's not going to be really a factor for sterling currency if you are looking at that. Canadian retail sales, uh, the loony always responsive to these types of indicators, so unless you're looking at the CAD specifically, uh, I'd, I'd be aware of that. Um, European consumer confidence, flash reading, that's a non-market mover. And then for oil traders, more of a lagging indicator of sorts. To make a huge rig count will come out as per usual, 6 p.m. tonight. A couple of Fed speakers, though. Uh, obviously, the first we'll start hearing, given now the blackout period is over from the decision we had on Wednesday night. So Fed's Rosengren. Rosengren speaking on, on credit cycles, but obviously Rosengren was a dissenter at the meeting, has continued to be that way, sitting right on the far extremity of being one of the most hawkish. So we're interested to hear what he has to say, talking at 20 past four London time. Fed's Kaplan, kind of opposite view, but a non-voting member um, speaking at 6 p.m. this evening. Final thing, just wanted to mention, of course, is today is quadruple witching. Uh, and that's the kind of final word I'll leave you with. Uh, so it means that you get all of the, the single stock and index option and future expiries all at the same time. Uh, from a practical point of view, this does mean if you're trading uh, equity indices, they tend to be quite volatile, particularly around the times of these expirations. So just to be clear, the FTSE 100 um, is at 10.15, the Eurostock's at 11. The DAX at 12, the CAC Coron is at uh, 3 p.m. The U.S. indices, it happens at the open, so cash market open at 2.30. Um, and then you get the boom bobble shats at quarter past four later on this afternoon in the fixed income space. Okay, that is it from me. Hand you over to Sam, and I wish you a fantastic weekend. I won't be here next week. Uh, but Sam will be, and then Piers will be covering the briefing as per normal. So if I don't speak to you beforehand, have a good weekend and a good following week ahead. Thanks very much. Yeah, Hi, guys, and, and happy Rugby World Cup start date. Um, I was actually, funny enough, just looking at exactly the same trend line as Ant, which is uh, always good to, to see. Uh, looking at the same thing and 
you know, the market will be as well. And I do like the look of uh, this this uh, this trend line to the downside breaking. While you know, even then, it's not going to guarantee, of course, a, a, a strong push to, to fill that gap. As, as Ant was saying, it's a good opportunity uh, on the break of that. So hopefully. The, the way this will come in, you know, the way I would like to trade it uh, anyway would be to, to see this more in the afternoon, maybe post two o'clock volume increasing, uh, get another test of the trend line beforehand and then get a break of that. Uh, of course, it could hold. Um, and then we're, we are looking obviously then closer towards that R1, yesterday's highs, which could be a good level. I mean, it would have to get through the high that we had back on <coughs> Tuesday, mo- uh, Friday, Thursday, Wednesday morning. Um, at 59.24 uh, but uh, yeah could be good opportunities uh, either way and, and just having a look over at, at the dollar it's at a pretty interesting point uh, as we speak just going back to uh, the low that we had on the Fed just having a look it seems like we're just testing that now and, and bringing in those uh, dollar pairs the euro is, is liking this the most at the moment however coming to a, a pretty interesting point so you've got obviously these trend lines coming down a bit, uh, you know, rough and, and ragged. But certainly from the last couple of days, from the 18th to yesterday on the 19th, are we going to get that third test along with the R1? You've got some other key resistance points around there. So Euro just trying to have a, a push to the upside. However, it is a key resistance point, and you know you struggle to get through there maybe on the first test. Uh, of course, if it did, you've got those previous highs and. Uh, the, the you know the higher points from the beginning of the week as well, but the dollar just under uh, a bit of bit of pressure. The pound, who which did push, just now trying to find a bit of support. Uh, well, kind of trying to find a bit of support on yesterday's high. Obviously, quite high up now, and it just takes one headline, one you know you know Junker didn't really mean what he said kind of headline, or someone on the other side saying no, it's not going to happen, and we do come lower, and uh, rather than trading it. Uh, one twenty six fifty. At the end of the day, we're trading back down at one twenty five. So headline risk, obviously, something to, to factor in there. But the dollar is is weaker, and um, you know, I, I just before we move on to, to gold, which I do like the, the look of at the moment. Uh, you can still see these trend lines that broke yesterday. So you know, keeping a watch on that. Should we come back lower, there you know could well be a good opportunity. To, to find some support around these these areas here, 124.81, uh, and at the moment that trend line coming in around 125.20 or mid 20s there uh, as well. Gold, I do like the the look of um, as a, as a, even a medium term long. You know, ideally, you'd you know you'd have been brave and got in on that uh, amazing low round at 14.92 and. Uh, it's, it's, it's just bounced so well from there. We are coming to the, perhaps the top end of that range, which means you might you know, be better off waiting to see how we close the, the day and the, the week above that, that point. Uh, but a push above there and, and then suddenly you know, we're back looking at the top that we had back on the, the, the 12th and uh, those, those highs from the year, that double top from the 23rd of August and 4th of September could be in, in, in sort of touching distance. Having a look more intraday, is there an opportunity to get in gold today? Uh, I do quite like the look of the, the pivot, 1505, um, more so because the support that we had yesterday rather than just the pivot itself. But uh, I quite like the, the look of that as a midpoint perhaps uh, to get in for a long. Um, short term resistance, I think this point around here, 1514 point, if I get it right, Point eight. Also, you know, the breakdown we saw before the Fed was also the high that we had back on Tuesday, and good support uh, resistance there on the Monday as well. So, you know, there's a good line in the sand. I don't really like the idea of a short from there, um, but that could be the point where we just start to see a reversal to then maybe get in a, a long to to continue uh, the bounce that we had from uh, Wednesday evening, following uh, the Fed uh, as well. U.S. equities. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens when we we finish the the week. You know where we close, and you know just having a look here on that daily chart, just from that all-time high. Let's just move that down. Bring in a trend line. You can see quite nicely respected from the uh, all-time highs, so the last two tops that we've we've had, and. 
Uh, didn't quite make it, but something just to bear in mind should we get a, a push to that area. Remains to, to be seen, of course, where we finish the week and, and that will bring in some new uh, buying or selling pressure. But uh, 29, 21, you can see, was the, the high that we had back on the 9th of September. Each time we tried to get below there, we, we obviously had quite a, a few false breakouts. One, two, three, four. Uh, so 91 to the downside. Obviously, you probably need a comment for us to get to there. Uh, and we're pretty much bang in the middle between the all-time high and that level. Uh, but there's a bit of a line in the sand. I, I do quite like the, the look of that. Also, for us to, to get that, you know, probably going to be another third test of, uh, or the third test, I should say, of, of that trend line. So a couple of interesting points uh, for equities as we come into the close of the week. Uh, I do like the look of, of oil if we can technically uh, push lower. Obviously, still a whack away from that euro and pound. Just uh, you know, pushing against the dollar. Dollar index worth keeping an eye on on these levels here, as it is just testing the post Fed uh, low. Um, but any questions, as usual, please do let us know. Uh, obviously, hope you have a, a great uh, weekend. Enjoy the rugby as well, as, uh, as we all cross our fingers. I'm sure for England to do better than last time and get out of the group stage. Uh, but I hope you all uh, have a good trading date. Good end to the week and uh, we'll catch you all on Monday morning.